Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back once again to TransWest Truck Trailer RV. My name's Mark Love, and I'm really excited about today's video. We're going to do something a little bit different today. What I have for you here is a 2021 Verona. It's the 40 LRB floor plan, and this is a sold coach. Uh, a few weeks ago, the couple that bought it came out, inspected it, test drove it, happy with their purchase, but then they had to go back home and they asked us to deliver this unit for them, which we're happy to do. Now, when you buy a unit and come here to pick it up, you're normally going to get a walkthrough experience with one of the members of our service department. But because we're delivering it to this coach, we're gonna do a video walkthrough for you today, pointing out all the systems and how to use them. And the person we're gonna have doing that is uh, Bill Habercorn, our technical advisor. Now just a little bit about Bill. Uh, Bill and I actually worked together nearly 20 years ago at a uh, dealership not too far away from here. Bill was the service manager at that dealership. And he truly is one of the most knowledgeable people I know in the RV business. He can uh, walk you through a 20 or 30 year old unit Remember what compartment has your inverter, where your aqua hot is, where your resets are. He's just a, a great pool of information. And that's one of the benefits you get when you buy from TransWest RV. We pride ourselves in, in trying to give you a first rate experience with the sales, with the delivery, and with the service and support you get after delivery. And part of that is having access to our technical advisor, Bill. And uh, today he's gonna walk around this unit for the coach and then tomorrow morning it's leaving uh, for Arizona and we're gonna deliver it to the couple. So without any further delay, I'd like to introduce Bill for you right now. Thanks Mark <laughs> for that great intro. Well, you're Appreciate welcome. It. Good morning everybody, welcome. Um, today we're gonna be going through the 21 Verona. I'll show you um, operation, how everything works. Um, little tricks to the trade, little things that uh, if you get a hiccup, it's just a quick reset, that kind of stuff. Um, probably the most important thing to remember on RVs is there's a lot of electronics going on all the time. The biggest cure is just doing like a master reset like you would on your phone or your computer. Just shut everything down, wait a couple minutes, power everything back up. Usually cures 99% of your problems. Um, so with that being said, Let's start going around the outside of the coach and I'll show you everything that I know, okay? So I like to start usually on the outside and then move my way around. Um, ah, doors are locked, that's okay. So you got a fuel fill on this side and a fuel fill and a def fill on the other side. Um, two separate tanks. They do have a, um, what I wanna say, like a transfer tube in between the two that uh, keeps the fuel regulated, keeps it at the same level. Um, no keyless entry on this. Um, so you do have your regular handle and then a deadbolt here. Um, screen door with your slider to keep all the bugs out. We'll start with the bays. So this one is just gonna be storage. Um, you do have, if you look inside, you do have your inverter controller or your inverter itself, your Zamboni solar controller, and then behind that black cover is a couple of relays, um, slide room controllers, that kind of stuff. Really nothing serviceable in there, but uh, it's, a good, it's good to know that it's there. Uh, one thing I will tell you about the inverter, there's this little gray button here. And what this is for is, um, it's, it's more of like a reset than anything else. So, if the inverter's acting up, it's not charging the batteries, you're not getting the right voltage readings. Um, I always say to come out here and push and hold this button for 20 seconds. You'll hear the inverter kind of click, reset, and that usually takes care of it. It's, it's a software reboot for the inverter, basically, and it basically, usually takes care of all problems. In here is just storage. Um, it is set up, if you, as you can see on this one, you can put an exterior uh, freezer in here if you wanted to. You do have a way to plug in if you want to do an outside, I don't know, barbecue grill or something like that.
outside entertainment system, uh, remote for the TV, and all these TVs pretty much work the same. Um, if you look at the remote, you've got a source button that allows you to go through your different inputs. Um, you have a home button that allows you to um, go into the settings of the, of the TV. And the only time you'd really need to do that is if you want to change from like cable to antenna inputs. Um, so right now I can scroll over. So my icon's at the bottom. If I scroll over to the left, I can pull up settings. It's got a little cursor here. If I hit the middle of the cursor, it takes me into those. Then I can drop down and go into different settings as far as that goes. Now right now we're on um, Dish Network, so it's not pulling up my broadcast. But if I go into the broadcasting part of this, I can change what input I'm using, whether it's cable or antenna, and then I can do an auto program, which you're going to have to do whenever you go probably more than 250 miles. Um, you pick up new sources there. Um, the other thing is you do have remote for your Jensen radio, and this is a DVD player, so this is going to be your outside entertainment DVD player for this TV. Um, have a remote for that. Oh, this is just another remote for the TV. It's just a fancier remote for the TV is all this is. It's got little quick buttons, that kind of stuff. So I can control the TV with this remote as well. It's got it a little bit easier to use cursor um, and a home button as well. So they just call that like a micro remote. Oh, the other thing it does have out here is a USB port so that you can tie in and use um, uh, like music off of your iPhone or that kind of stuff and you can also Bluetooth into the radio if you need to. Back here is more storage. These are travel bars. Um, they're shipped with these from the manufacturer. Um, they're great for locking the room in place. The problem with them that I run into a lot is people forget that they actually have them installed. And if you don't remove them, when you run the room out, the room overpowers those locks and it'll break faces, that kind of stuff. So do you really need them going down the road? No. Um, they just have to ship them from the factory with them as part of just safety. Um, so find a good place for them. I wouldn't use them on the RV. More storage back here. Almost a complete pass through. And all the compartments are keyed the same. Um, and then the entry door is keyed separately. Do have an air chuck here or an air hose for filling up tires, filling up toys, that kind of stuff. There is a port on the other side, which I'll show you, that connects, um, that you can connect that to, and it just pulls air off of the, the chassis air suspension and brake system. As we come around the back of the bus, you'll see it's got a class five, and this is rated at 20,000 pounds, uh, 2,000 pound tongue weight. Class five is bigger receiver, so if you're towing a car or something behind it, you're gonna have to get a sleeve to bring it down to a regular class four hitch. This one does have capability of using an auxiliary backup camera like on your tow vehicle behind you or your trailer, um, seven way plug and then an air connection for like an Air Force One. Generator exhaust, which you can hear it running right now. Back here is your shore cord, your power cord, your access panel to drop the cord down through. Your retract switch is right here. So it's automatic retract, manual pull out. Transfer switch is right here. This is also a surge guard, so it protects the coach from surges coming through the, through the power cord. Um, the transfer switch's main responsibility is to separate power coming into the coach. So the generator goes into it and the shore cord, and then it goes into the coach. Um, the priority on that is generator. So if you're plugged in and you fire the generator, you're not gonna hurt anything. And the generator will always take priority because it's basically, if it's running, it's putting out good, good voltage. And I believe that is it. There's an auxiliary 
110 plug out here that is GFI protected as well. Whoops, out here is your generator. Oh, come on. Um, on a generator, you've got a start stop switch here. So basically, if you push and hold it, you hold it until it starts. Um, it does have a controller in it that regulates how cold it is or senses how cold it is outside and then it fires up glow plugs and a fuel pump inside. Um, when it's 90 degrees, the generator will start right up right when you touch the button. When it's zero or you know really cold out, it could take it up to a minute of you holding that button before the generator is actually going to start and fire up. Um, there is a 110 breaker on here as well. So if for any reason you lose power inside or you start the generator and you're not getting any voltage inside, make sure to come out and check that breaker. Um, generator should be serviced about every 150 to 200 hours. Out here is our water bay. Um, so it has a whole house filter, basically a canister here. Now we do have this coach winterized right now. Um, so everything's kind of taken apart. We will um, de-winterize it for the customer um, before we ship it to him. And being that this does have an aqua hot, it will stay cold, uh, warm enough. Um, it, this thing would be fine in uh, sub-zero temperatures. Because um, this bay here, which is where all your water stuff is, this bay is heated. And it does transfer some of the heat over to your holding tanks. Um, so in here you have a low point drain. So this is going to drain all the system water um, from the faucets and everything. You do have an outside spigot here as well that you can connect a hose up and use the water inside the coach to like wash the outside or wash off toys, whatever you want to do. Sewer hose um, holder is here. You do have an outside um, shower hose for this so that you can spray stuff off out here. Um, black tank flush. So whenever you're um, Probably every, every other time you use or fill up the black tank, you should probably flush it. Um, some people like to flush it every time. So you're going to hook up a garden hose to this, open up your black tank dump, and just let it rinse out and drain out on the ground. You never want to hook up a hose unless you've got this valve open because you can't overfill that tank. Um, below is cable hookup, and we talked about that on the TV. Um, if I change my input to cable, this is where I would hook up to, and then I go through and do a cable search and pick up the channels that are available to me. Um, black and gray tank dump valves are here. Always dump the black first, and then you want to pull and dump the gray. It helps rinse out um, the hose and keeps from getting all that sewage on your hands. Um, and then this also has a hose reel that is kind of buried back here. But you have a hose reel here, and this is a 50-foot hose. This is what you're going to connect to, like, say, um, your pedestal at your campground. And then you have a retract switch right here. And here is my black and my gray tanks. And it takes up both these compartments. So both these compartments are, are pretty much used. Um, and you would hook up your hose here, and then you, you, as you can see, your gate valves are all cable related. So when you're pulling those handles on the other side in this bay, you're opening up those valves to dump here. And you can dump either here or here, either one of these two. All right, and here's your aqua hot, and it's a 250D. So, they, it's kind of the new version of the hydro hot. So it gives you um, hot water and heat. Has two sources of heat coming into it. So you've got a diesel burner, and you've got an electric element just just submerged in the boiler antifreeze. Um, the electric element would probably work fine above, like say, 55 degrees, and it give you about 20 minutes of hot water. If you want more than that, or if it's colder, you definitely want to run on the diesel burner because um, the electric just won't keep up. The other thing on this unit is if you're running hot water, it shuts off the heating until the water is shut off and then the heating takes back over again. So it doesn't do both at the same time. Uh, it's more efficient that way.
um, overflow canisters here, you can bypass it using these valves if you need to. Um, controller is back here and it all communicates inside with the Firefly system. So if there's any faults, any of that, it's all done inside. Um, access cover here to get to the burner should be serviced about every year, um, depending on normal usage, and that's putting a new nozzle in it, new fuel filter, cleaning it up. Um, and then about every five years, you should probably flush the fluid out of it. Okay, the rest of this is storage. Okay, and here's our batteries. Um, now this just has regular deep cycle batteries. So these three are your house batteries. These two are your chassis batteries. Um, they are usually about, yeah, so they're a 100 amp hour a piece. Um, so it's gonna give you about 300 amp hours of usage. You can break that down into, you know, using stuff inside. Um, lights usually use, you know, 0.3 of an amp. Um, radio, TV, Aquahot doesn't use a whole lot of power, so usually these batteries would easily last you um, a weekend, if not a little bit longer, just dry camping. Um, most people use these plugged in, so uh, you don't have to worry about it because the inverter is always charging the batteries. Um, anything else in here? You do have a manual disconnect back here that is tied together with the regular um, disconnect switch inside so if that switch ever fails you can always come out here and use this dial to turn the disconnects on and off. Um, dual charge bridges here, uh, separate circuit breakers for different um, options inside the coach. Fuel fill on this side and then your def and your def is usually 10% of your fuel so if it's 100 gallons of fuel, it usually holds 10 to 12 gallons of def. Um, you do have an outside 110 block heater switch here. So if you're up cold, North Dakota, um, you can plug this in and allow the engine to preheat. Um, not a whole lot here. You do have a main chassis disconnect here. Um, so when you're not using the coach, you want to shut it off. Keep from killing the chassis batteries. Um, seat controls, you have your backrest here, your seat control here where you can slide it forward and back, seat heat on this, and then there's a swivel here that allows you to swivel it around. So if you bring the seat all the way forward, you can swivel it around, it gives you more seating inside the coach. That's about it in here. Power door locks, um, you got mirror controls here, your power windows are on the dash along with your power door locks. Now we're going to go underneath the hood. Got a latch on both sides, and then you just pull it forward, it does have cables so it's not going to, it's not going to fall on you. Up underneath the hood area, um, you do have your chassis fuse box here, um, another small fuse box here, everything is labeled, everything's labeled on the back of this as well, and then your relay box is here, and that's all Freightliner. Um, power steering fluid here, it uses just regular power steering fluid, um, this one says Dextron 3. Fuel filter and fuel water separator is down here below, so if you're starting to see some water, um, fuel's always going to be lighter than the water, so you'll see it at the bottom. It'll just be clear. You can just drain it out right there. Engine oil dipstick, check first thing in the morning. Transmission dipstick is back here, kind of hidden. I don't know if you can see it. I'll point to it. Um, you want to check that hot idling in neutral. Um, that's about it here. And if you notice any questions or something that you see, um, please feel free to email us or send us a text, whatever. Um, over on this side, you do have your air dryer for your air suspension. This, depending on where you live, high humidity, you should service it every year. Colorado, it's one of the driest places on earth. Um, probably just about every five years, you get this desiccant filter replaced um, every three to five years and just have them service it. 
Uh, windshield washer reservoir is here. Engine air filter is here. Um, it does have a little minder. So basically what this does is it's sensing vacuum going through the filter. And if uh, the filter starts to plug up, your vacuum increases. So this is gonna go red. When it goes red, it's time to replace the air filter. Coolant reservoir here uses Cummins um, ELC extended life coolant. Okay. That's about it up front and on the outside. Um, awning controls are all done on the inside. Um, and this is, is that a lid on him? Yeah. So with further, without further ado, do you want to head on inside? And we'll start going through the stuff on the inside. So before you come in, right here at the base, here's your main house disconnect switch. So if I, if I pull this up and push it down, it's going to kill all the power inside the house. That's the same thing as that disconnect switch I showed you in the battery bay. Um, this has a entry step override. So basically, if I, if I lift it up, every time I open and close the door, the step's not going to go in and out. Um, and then this has an e-start. Basically what the e-start is, it's an emergency start. So it allows you to tie the batteries together if the house is dead or if the chassis is dead. Works both ways, okay? Fire extinguisher, of course. And then behind you here, we have just our regular wall plate switches. These are all um, USB, they send a, they, or uh, Wi-Fi, they send a signal basically to um, the switch pad and then the switch pad sends that signal to the controller and the controller turns the lights on, um, extends and retracts the awning, turns the awning lights on, all that stuff is done here. Um, you do have an all on and an all off. Up in here is your audio and video. So up top, I'm just gonna light it up a little bit. Up top it has a Wally receiver. This is already set up for Dish Network. Um, your Blu-ray player, and this plays to this TV. Um, you have, mm, oh, WeBoost. So um, that is just, it gives you a little bit stronger cellular signal here, um, along with this unit here. And then this also has, so if you look here, we have uh, basically, I got an antenna booster and a Wi-Fi Ranger power, um, and it's made by Winegard. Um, so this controls both TV amplified signal and it gives you um, internet access. Um, now it doesn't provide you with internet, it pulls in available networks around you and boosts the signal. Okay, um, And that stuff is in the owner's manual. If you pull up the owner's manual, open it up, go to the WineGuard section, it's going to give you the password, your, the SSID that you're looking for. And then it walks you through how to go into and select different networks and bring them into the coach. Um, up front is our jack system. And this one is actually compatible with a, with a smartphone. So if, uh, if you download this app here, this EQ Smart Level, you can control the jacks with your smartphone. You can also control everything in this coach that the Firefly controls, which the Firefly is your system control, it's your touch face, um, customer uh, interface with the system. And you can download the app there as well and control everything that that controls through your phone. It's pretty handy. Um, jack system, basically you turn it on, hit auto level, it's gonna go through and run the jacks and level the coach. Um, we're pretty far out of level here, so I may not be able to do it here. But basically, it's all automatic. Um, if you don't want to do that, we can stop it. Hit all retract. I can basically raise and lower the jacks, each individual jack by itself. So oh, I don't say individual. It'll do two jacks at a time. So they call that bi-axis leveling. The reason they do that is so that it doesn't tweak the frame, the chassis, any of that stuff. Okay, um, your inverter controller is here. So this is how you're gonna tell if the inverter is working right. Right now, um, we're on the main screen, which is the meter screen, and it's telling me that we are float charging the batteries. Battery voltage is at 13.9, and we're throwing 26, 27 amps at them. Um, I can turn the inverter on and off here. So if I kick it on, basically, the light will light up, but it's not being used right now because of um, the generator right now is powering 
the systems. Um, the inverter in this one will run the microwave, the fridge, your audio video, and a couple of outlets. Um, so when I have the inverter on here, as soon as I kill the generator, the inverter takes over and powers up those outlets and those appliances. Um, charger, you should never really ever have to touch that button. Um, if you do happen to touch it, I kill the charger off. You'll see it go into standby. It's not charging the batteries anymore. Um, so I don't recommend doing that. I always, you know, whenever this thing's plugged in or the generator's running, it should be charging the batteries. Um, let me see. Saves. Let's see, this does not have auto gen set or auto gen start. Um, set up tech. Setup is used for us when we first set up the system. We'll set the um, battery type, amp hours, the time of day, that kind of stuff. Um, meter's going to show me what's going on with it. Control. Let's see if we can. This has AGS. Charge control. Generator control. Yes. So in here is where I'm going to kick my. Oh, so it has no AGS because it tells me right there there's no AGS present. Um, it can be added to the fact, um, after the fact on this coach, to do auto gen start if needed. Um, and then Faves is just going to give me, you know, just quick, quick pages. Okay. And then with all these, you get uh, roadside assist from RV Assist, and you do have a phone number there. That's uh, breakdown, um, help, um, jump starts, any of that kind of stuff. It's like good SAM or AAA. And up here is just storage. But you do get extra paints. So these are all the exterior paint colors. All right, we went through the TV. This does have a Bluetooth sound bar, so it's going to use a little bit different. Let me find the remote. If we can get the TV to come on, yes, and we'll choose a source. We'll go to TV. And this is where I would program it to pick up channels. So right now it's probably not picking up anything. So if I go into the home button and go through and um, set it up, we can get sound. Or we can get picture, I'm sorry. If I can get it to work. All right, let's try this one. Lots of remotes in RVs. There we go. So now I can kick over to the bottom again. Maybe I'm just being impatient. One thing about RVing, you gotta learn to be patient, especially with satellites, Wi-Fi, all that kind of stuff. Um, It'll drive you nuts if you are not a patient person. I mean, like right now, it's driving me nuts. But anyway, the sound bar plays everything that goes through the TV. So basically, my digital in is my signal coming in from the TV. Um, I can Bluetooth just like I can with anything else. Um, different sources so I can Bluetooth in right now it's going to be sending a signal out saying um, Bluetooth and it's probably just going to be Samsung Bluetooth bar um, and, it, and then you can play whatever you want through that as well do we need to go any more into the TV do you think I like said they all pretty much work the same um, it's got to be patient we have storage down below good storage storage up above microwave so this is a microwave and a convection oven um, both um, cooking with the microwave of course the metal trays have to come out that kind of stuff cooking with the convection oven you need to pull this tray and this wheel off of here um, otherwise because this glass really isn't rated for high temps 
You do have a quick start guide for the uh, operation of the microwave and the convection, but basically you can t um, do everything down here. Uh, let's see, convection, bake, so I can set temperatures at whatever I want it at. Like say if I set it at 250, I can start and let it cook. Cancel, just open the door. Um, should be stop and start and then the microwave is going to be up top here so it's got all my little quick reference um, or I can just pick microwave and go through and what how long I want to cook what I want to cook and there's different things like I could do defrost and it'll uh, go through different types of meats different types of items um, that I'm going to cook okay um, storage oh no breakers and fuses are in here so these are all my 12 volt fuses. If I do blow a fuse, what's nice about this system is it lights up these little LEDs to tell me that I've blown a fuse. They're real handy. Um, down below is my breakers, all 110 breakers, and everything's noted as to what each breaker is for. So I have two rows. Okay. Um, Aqua Hot gives your heat out through these little heat exchangers here. So you're going to find these throughout the coach. Little wood covered. There's a little heater core back behind it with a computer fan. Basically it pumps um, heated boiler antifreeze through the heater core and then uh, dissipates it out through the coach. Uh, now we get to the Firefly. So this is the brains. This is a control center for the whole coach. Um, on this first screen it's going to tell me um, basically what my tank levels are and uh, battery voltages, that kind of stuff. I need to get my old man glasses on. So um, I've got a light master switch here as well. Um, I can turn my satellite on here um, and that's just going to be a, a um, in motion round dome so it's going to pick up going down the road. One thing nice about Dish Network is that you don't have to have a traveler to get high definition TV. Um, with DirecTV, you have to have an open face dish that actually picks up all three satellites at the same time. Um, with dish, you do not. Not that I'm trying to sell you dish, it's just easier. Um, so I've got my tank levels here. I've got a tank heat switch here that I can kick on the heat. Um, and that's basically just blankets on the bottom of the tank heater so I can turn my water pump on here. And this is where I turn on my aqua hot, the, my little unit outside, that uh, 250D. So I've got diesel and electric. Um, it's pretty cold today, so it's probably better for us to just kick the diesel on. It's definitely going to heat up faster. Um, if I use just the electric, it'd probably take an hour and a half of it heating before it's, I started filling heat out of the base. Um, with the diesel, it takes about five minutes. Um, this is gives you my outside te or my uh, temperatures inside the coach, and then my house and chassis batteries um, generator. I can start and stop here, and then my AGS is done through here. So if I kick AGS, I can enable it. it. Basically, all those settings are set up. So disregard what I set up front on the Magnum panel, because <laughs> it's all done through the Firefly panel. Um, but basically, now it's on, and it's, I can kick it on there. And it's basically it shut it off because my batteries are full enough. Um, if I disable it and go back to my home screen, I can start it back up again. So AGS, basically I'm letting the Firefly system control the generator. Um, and it's going to control it off of low voltage. So when voltage gets below a certain threshold, it's going to start the generator and it's going to run. And it's going to run for two hours and then it's going to look at the batteries and see what charge state they are. Um, and then if it needs to, it's going to run for another two hours and it continues that cycle until it gets the batteries fully charged up. Uh, my next screen is my lights. So I can control each individual light separately. Um, and basically when the icon's lit up, it's, it's on. Uh, my next screen is going to be my power source. Um, and it takes me and shows me what's coming in on line voltage. My AGS is also done through here. My solar power. So I do have solar panels on the roof. I can enable and disable this. Um, right now it is disabled if I kick it on. I can enable it. Now I'm both charging off my solar. Um, Beans that this has regular AGM batteries, just leave the solar on all the time. If this was a lithium coach, I would tell you only use the solar um, when you are dry camping or boondocking. 
um, battery type, AGM, and it's just all my different settings in there. If we go back, like I said, it's going to show me what's going on with all the electrical in the coach, uh, basically 110. Next is the climate screen. So I can set fronts, rears. Um, I can even do my bay controls as well. Um, let's go back to interior. So I can um, kick my air conditioner on and set my temps. Go heat pump, which both front and rear air conditioner have a heat pump built into these. Um, heat pump will not work if it's below 38 degrees outside. Um, and then the aqua hot, which is um, the main source of heat. Auto, if I kick auto, basically, and I set a temp, um, it's going to cycle the heat and the air conditioning depending on what it feels it needs. The problem with auto is that the variance is so small that it'll fire the air conditioner up and then shut off five minutes later, turns the heat on, and it continues that cycle back and forth. So I don't recommend using the auto, but it is there if people want to use it. And it's basically auto, I would set it at 70 degrees and it would try and keep everything here at 70 degrees. Um, same thing for the back, for the rear air conditioner and heat source. Um, you'll see I only have one aqua hot heat source here, and that's because there's basically one zone in the whole coach, and it's all run off the front. So it heats the front and the rear of the coach. Um, aqua hot diesel is on. Um, aqua hot electric is shed right now because the generator's not running. Let's see if we can get that generator to start again. There we go. So it's going to say shed because it's not seeing any 110 coming in. So you'll see shed up here, you'll see shed back there. Basically it's doing it because it's just not seeing any 110. Um, once the generator starts, it takes 45 seconds for it to supply power inside the coach. Um, next is my ceiling fans. And so basically I have a ceiling fan in the kitchen area and a ceiling fan um, in, in the toilet area and then in the vanity area. Um, and I can raise and lower from here and set my fan. This is my slide room controls. So basically, key off, um, and I can run my rooms out. And I always run the rooms out first and then level the coach. Um, the reason being is because the jacks can actually tweak the suspension enough that it can throw these rooms into a bind. So I always recommend, um, always recommend, always, um, like I said, run the rooms in and out on the suspension first and then level the coach. The exact opposite when you bring it back in. Put the coach back on the suspension, take it off the jacks, and, um, and then re uh, retract the rooms. So I can do my rooms and my awning from here. All right, and then, yeah, and then the awning. And then my next one is my last, it's kind of my setup screen. Um, like I said, there's a mobile app. So if I hit the mobile app, I can download um, the app here from the mirror. Um, it's available on the App Store. This is the coach ID number and the mirror pin number. Once you put that into your app, it allows you to access everything that this does on your phone. Really handy when you're like in a campground area and you're trying to uh, see if you can run a room out without hitting a tree. You can stand out there and watch it. It's really handy for that kind of stuff. Um, like I said, the jacks. Real handy, make sure there's nothing underneath it before you deploy the jacks. Um, go back to the home screen, and then this takes me into like net network diagnostics. If I had a fault, I would actually get a little asterisk up here. Um, so basically, it's telling me what's going on, what my G12, and my G12 panel is my control panel. That's what turns all the lights, the fans, the awning, the rooms. That's what, it controls everything. Um, my air conditioners. Um, the controls and make sure everything's communicating properly. Green lights are always good. And then my vent fans. Um, Fahrenheit, or I can set my temperature, put my floor plan in here, um, my version for my software and my GI er, version, my screen brightness, auto dimming, cleaning mode. So if I want to clean this screen off, I'm going to push that, then I can clean it. It'll revert back to normal screen after 15 seconds.
And that's pretty much it with the Firefly. Usually I say any questions at this point, but I know we don't have any, so. Um, pantry here, pull out. No pull out, but storage up above. Fridge is here. You do have travel latches, so you wanna make sure that um, you release the travel latches before you try and open stuff up. Regular fridge, uh, regular residential house fridge. Um, set your temps here, set your, your freezer here, your fridge temps here. I can turn my ice on and off, power freeze, which is just uh, turbo. It just kicks it up. It just makes it faster. Power cools the same way. Um, East saver is going to be energy, you know, an energy saver mode, which means it's probably going to run like half amps. Um, no filters on this. And then my ice maker is down below. Ice maker tread. And then it's locked for travel. Okay. Um, you do have pocket door here. It's magnetically held in the back track there, so it's a little hard to open. And then it's just like, just has a little latch to lock it off between the two. Um, let's continue on back. Same thing, they all have pocket door for the bathroom and going into the bedroom. Shower controls. Now this coach is winterized and I did accidentally turn the pump on so you'll see the mess, um, which I will clean up for this customer. Shower controls are here, basically hot, cold, um, and it just has the head. Toilet controls are here. You have a um, water saver mode and then a, um, so I like to say this is for like number one and number two. Uh, basically going to add more water in your toilet. This is a macerator toilet, so it does send the sewage to the holding tank. Um, you have a controller here on the wall for water pump, bath, fan, up and down, and the speed. Storage up above here. Um, let's go underneath the bed because this customer did want to know how to de-winterize. Winterize. Stay. All right. So underneath here is my water tanks, two 75-gallon water tanks. Um, and they are plumbed together, as you can see down below. So you're basically filling one tank, and it uh, equalizes pressure in both tanks. You got drains here on both tanks. Um, this is for winterizing. So um, basically, I'm going to take this out, put it in a gallon of antifreeze, and I'm going to, well, it's probably going to take more than a gallon. It's probably going to take about five gallons with washer dryer and everything. But turn this valve so that I'm pulling from this hose, and I'm going to pump antifreeze through everything on this coach. Um, faucets, both hot and cold, toilet, washer dryer, um, ice maker. I want to leave the ice maker probably powered up and pressurized up overnight so that I know that I'm getting antifreeze into the ice maker, it'll make basically green or pink slush. Um, down below I have a fresh tank drain valve, so when I'm using it, that's closed. When I'm not using it, I want to drain the water out of the system. Uh, water gets real nasty after about 30 days, so you don't want to leave it sit in these tanks. I've seen um, coaches with water in them that sat for a year and they were full of mold on the inside. USB chargers, storage in both of these, good size storage. Rear TV, and then your rear TV controls are down here, so you have a Blu-ray. If you wanted to do a separate satellite receiver, you could do that here. Um, storage down below. Storage in here, storage drawers, storage, storage. <laughs> Lots of storage in this coach. And this does have the soft closed drawers, which is really nice. Uh, medicine cabinet. Fan control and wall plate switch here. Sorry if I'm jumping around too fast. And storage down below, another heat exchanger. Then we get to the washer dryer. Just a regular residential washer dryer here. Um, 110 dryer.
with your controls up top. And then you've got your 110 washer dryer, or washer here. Um, your soap dispenser, everything is done here. So you've got bleach, detergent, and softener. Your different cycles are here, and they're all notated on the front of what each cycle does. And basically, you just turn the dial till you pull up the cycle that you desire. Um, turn it on and start it. Okay? You've got lots of different features for speeds, water temp, everything else. All right. Window shades are all the same. They're all manual shades on this. So you have your daytime or your nighttime shades and then your daytime shades. So basically, you just pull them down until they stop. Bring them back up. Window operation with these jealousy windows. Um, just turn to crank them out. Now, I have seen these, especially around Colorado, the seals dry up and these windows tend to stick. So just give it a little bit of pressure you'll, you know, against it, you'll kind of hear that seal start to give way a little bit, and then finally it'll pop and you can open the windows. The dinette does make into a bed. So basically these cushions come out. And these, um, the forward facing seats do have seat belts for um, passengers, not the rear facing seats. So basically it's going to make a bed just like that. Then these cushions come in. There should be another cushion somewhere, but I didn't see it. Maybe underneath the drawers here. One thing you, you'll find on used coaches is people will take stuff out and put them in their house if they're not using them, and you don't know why they do that. Um, oh, no, here's the other cushion right back here. Okay. And then this just pulls right back up for usage. There's a little lever on the bottom. Just flip it over, and it locks it in place. So this little lever, I don't know if you could see it, but basically it locks it in place like that. All right, then we have a sofa sleeper here. I think it's just a flip and fold. little release handle just pull on that then you can pull it out this one you do have to extend the arms down manually and then this couch is also used um, for seat belts and then you have your extra storage there so no we do not have a cushion for that hmm. all right I suppose in a pinch these would work. How the heck did that go? Other way, I think. This is the back. Oh, this is the back. God. Thank you. It's fun to get older and see now. Okay. Now we're up to the dash area. Yeah. 
so we'll go through this. Um, probably don't need the keys on. Have a headlight switch here. So up is going to give me headlights. Down is marker lights. Um, below that, I have an increase and decrease for my headlights or for my in, inside lights, basically. Bright and, and dim the dash lights. Um, wiper controls are here. Intermittent, low, high. Push for wash. Um, headlight flash, so high beams is push. Pull is for just the flash of lights. Horn is here for a house. Highway horn is there. Um, you can set your trips and odometer here off of that. You got fog light switch. This is a, um, so it locks the rear axle basically to give you equal torque to both rear wheels um, so if you get stuck. Uh, camera setup, so I've got my truck and my trailer using the plug in the back if, I, if I'm towing something that has a camera on it. Um, window controls are here. Transmission control is here. So um, basically neutral, no park brake on this, um, weighs too much. So your park brake is this. And you heard that little buzz, this has um, lane departure. So if I happen to veer out of my lane a little bit, it's going to go off on that speaker on that side. Um, so if I veer off to the left, my left speaker is going to come on. If I veer off to my right, my right speaker is going to come on. Um, this also has uh, collision avoidance, which is tied in with the cruise control here. So um, collision mitigation system is what this stands for. And I can set up um, different um, intensities. I can set up different um, how far. Oh, I cannot set. Nope, I cannot set how far. Just my alarm, my alarm volume, and my display. Um, but basically, it's going to um, just. It's gonna warn me, probably by screaming. Um, I don't think this one shakes the steering wheel, but that will start going yellow and then it will go red when I'm getting too close to somebody in front of me. Um, it does help control the cruise control, so it will slow you down. It does not apply brakes like on these newer vehicles. Um, as far as the transmission, like, like I said, I got drive, neutral, reverse. Um, my selected gear is gonna be over here, so if I put it in drive, it's gonna say six. This is what gear I'm actually in. So if it was running, it would crank up and this would go to six. I can manually downshift if I want, like say I'm coming down a mountain or if I'm pulling a pretty good hill with a load and it's tending to get a little bit hot. If I downshift, it kicks the fan speed up because it matches the engine RPM and it helps cool the bus down quicker. Uh, mode on this one is a sport mode. So um, right now it's in economy mode. And if I kick the mode button on, it just changes shift points in the transmission enough to uh, give it a little bit, stays in gear a little bit longer. It uh, gives you a little bit more torque. Um, speed control is here, which is my cruise control. Resume, excel, set and coast. Park brake, pull to apply, push to release. Um, I got a mirror heat switch here. Engine brake switch here. So I have a high or a low. Off is in the middle. Um, regen. So uh, these trucks are basically built uh, for over the road trucking. Um, the chassis is per se, the M2 chassis. So it has um, the potential of sitting in a field if it's like for an oil company or something like that. So they'll do, put a regen switch in and there's a series that you have to do. It has to know there's somebody sitting behind the seat before it'll go through a regen. 99% um, of the time it'll do it on its own, driving down the road, you don't even know it's happening, except you'll get a little hot exhaust light up here on the dash. But if for any reason it cannot regen on its own, then it's gonna start flashing you a regen light. And it kinda lo it looks just like that symbol. Um, yellow means that you need to do it. Red means uh, you better do it or it's gonna shut down. Um, so pull into a parking lot, Walmart, whatever, big parking lot, cause it's gonna, uh, kick up the exhaust heat. You hit the regen switch, you're going to have to apply the brake, put it in park neutral twice, 
um, or actually neutral drive, neutral reverse. You gotta do that sequence twice and then it'll go through and start doing the regen on its own. Um, spot lamp. Oh, this customer added a spot lamp underneath the hood. Either that or that might be new for Verona that I haven't seen in 21. This does have a tire pressure sensor monitor system here as well. Um, and it does just sense the tire pressures um, and then it will alarm you if for any reason there is a problem um, with tires either being too high or too low. Uh, door lock switch is here. Um, lane alert, which is, oh, I can shut that off. That is so nice. So that way you're not listening. That's part of the lane departure. Um, and then the optional light, which I don't think this one is being used at this point. Um, cigarette lighter, power outlet, USB for the front radio. Dash controls for your heat, uh, fan, mode, and my temps are here. Then we get into the radio. So I can go into music and, and pick different stations. Um, I can do AM, FM, Sirius XM, um, auxiliary, which would be plugged into my um, USB port there, or Bluetooth. Um, if I go back, I've got uh, my um, navigation system, so I can pull up my nav right now. I can put in my different settings of where I want to go. So um, I can look at the map or I can say where I want to go. Do I want to go home? I want to go look at an RV park. I want to put an address in. I, you know, any Please type of saves. To highlighted route. Thank you, dear. Um, camera. So there should be a remote somewhere to turn the camera on. Mark, have you seen any extra remotes in this bus? Anyway, um, there is a remote. It's a little um, Voyager remote that is used to turn the camera on and off and switch from side to side. Now it'll do it. It'll go left turn, it'll go right turn, um, and then it will go back to um, reverse, but I have to have that remote to be able to get it to do that. So I will find that. Um, I think that is about it. Let's go back home again. Um, oh, phone, I can pair my phone with this. Um, so I can do hands-free calling, the mic is up front here. And then uh, I can do all my hands-free hand -free calling from uh, the radio. And I think that is about it. I don't know if there's anything else. No, um, Garmin, simple system. Take it off to update it. I will update this before we send it off to the customer because um, it is just a regular Garmin with a Fusion radio. Um, with that being said, I think I'm done. I'm gonna hand this back over to Mark um, so he can finish up the video. Thank you for your time. I hope I didn't bore you to death. Um, and thank you for spending the day with me. Okay, well, thanks very much, Bill. Great information. A uh, Couple of things I would like to clarify before I go much further. First of all, at the beginning of this video, I called it a 40 LRV floor plan. It is not, it is the 36 VSB. I wanna reassure the people that are buying this, we are sending you the right coach. Also, uh, we talked about the Vega system a little bit. Uh, you can download that app so you can run it off your phone. If you have any questions, get a hold of me. We can send you a link so you can get that app. Um, one other thing, as uh, Bill was showing, the water tanks, and there's 150 gallon water capacity on this. We know you're gonna be using the coach and you asked to have water on board. That's something we're gonna to do tonight to risk any freeze up. So at the end of the day, uh, it'll be brought in, made sure it's dewinterized, water on board, we'll leave it in overnight. And then this coach is uh, on its way tomorrow uh, to the end customer. So uh, once again, I just wanted to point out not a lot of dealerships will give you the kind of support you get here. Once you buy a coach, you know, nobody believes that these things walk on water or aren't going to have any problems. There will be issues, and sometimes it's hard to determine, is this user error, or is this something that I need to bring in for, you know, service or a warranty issue? We can help walk you through that, and a lot of things I can help explain to you but Bill is our technical expert, and that's who I fall back on. Once you buy this coach, you will actually have Bill's phone number. 
So uh, once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. Uh, let me give you my contact information right here. And if you have any questions or want to get a hold of me, you can use my cell phone, 970-631-0083. Call or text me. Uh, you know, I've, I've really enjoyed doing this video today, although I didn't do much of the work. It's great to have somebody else walk you through the systems that really is an expert on them. So let us know if you have any questions. Uh, you know, thanks again for tuning in. Like always, folks, drive careful out there and uh, happy trails, everyone.